welcome to the Right to Reason podcast. I'm your host, Robert Stanley. Are our voting rights being challenged by red states? The Freedom to Vote Act was just shut down and shut down hard. Our conservative friend, Javier Javier, will answer to constitutional lawyer Rich Presida concerning states' rights, voter ID, gerrymandering, and paid voter holidays. Here we go. If I had a hammer, I'd a hammer in the morning, I'd a hammer in the evening, all over this land, I'd a hammer out of danger, I'd a hammer out of warning, I'd a hammer out of love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. It's the Right to Reason Podcast. The measure is considered by Democrats protection to one of the key cornerstones of American democracy. We're talking about the Freedom to Vote Act, which was blocked today by Senate Republicans. Mike Gunning tells us with an evenly divided chamber, the bill's prospects may be doomed from the start. Members of this body now face a choice. They can follow in the footsteps of our patriotic predecessors in this chamber, or they can sit by as the fabric of our democracy unravels before our very eyes. Backers of the Freedom to Vote Act say the measure is essential to protecting American democracy from the efforts of Republican legislatures and elections officials around the country to restrict voting access. But Wednesday's vote wasn't even on the merits of the bill itself. It was a procedural vote to enable further debate on the bill. And in a 50-50 Senate with a 60-vote supermajority required to advance most legislation, the bill's prospects were dim to begin with, with not one Republican supporting the measure. This latest bill still subjects popular common sense election integrity protections like voter ID to the whims of federal bureaucrats. On this vote, the yeas are 49, the nays are 51, three-fifths of the senators duly chosen and sworn not having voted in the affirmative, the motion is not agreed to. Governor, your critics say, and President Biden calling it Jim Crow 2.0, specifically the heaviest criticism is that this new law limits voting access to African Americans specifically. What do you say to that? Well, I can, you know, truthfully look in the camera and, and ask my African American friends and other African Americans in Georgia to simply find out what's in the bill versus just the blank statement of this is Jim Crow or, you know, this is voter suppression or this is racist because it is not. It expands early voting in Georgia. It also further secures the ballot with the photo ID requirement. And I would urge them to do just that and ask themselves, who's being truthful to you here? This episode of the Right to Reason podcast is brought to you by our patrons and contributors like me. We have all recognized the value of the unrestrained marketplace of ideas and have decided to make a difference. You can make a difference too. Contribute at patreon.com forward slash right and learn more about your right to reason at the right to reason.com. Your activism is appreciated. Yes. My skin is black, but that's no reason to hold me back. Javier, Javier from Two Sides, One Coin and the Javier, Javier Show. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic, man. I am uh, happy to have you back on. Jeez, what's it been? It's been a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a minute, man. You don't like to have me on with the deep discussions. Yeah, yeah. Race. <laughs> you're too you're too smart for us. That's what it is. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, I think you'll find this this uh, topic a challenge with an interlocutor that has a law degree, wrote a book on constitutional law. Also, you can find this podcast Bible Study for Progressives, and also um, that's that's on all the outlets, I'm sure. But uh, Democracy Under Fire that's a podcast and also a YouTube channel. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, you can find it. I did a little URL, tinyurl.com slash democracy under fire video that would take you to the YouTube page. It's on YouTube and also in audio podcast form. Do you mind starting us off uh, telling us what the Freedom to Vote Act is? And uh, if, if you don't mind, Javier, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and why you're opposed to it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, it's basically an act that provides a lot of provisions to ensure that everyone has the right to vote and that nobody is denied the right to vote. It sets basic standards for federal elections to ensure transparency and fair, free elections and voting through a number of provisions. We have a flawed democracy and our democracy needs to be improved And this does that and protects us from laws that make it harder and more difficult to people for people to vote. So over the last year, 19 states have enacted 33 laws that make it harder to vote ever since they lost the election. And so now they've made a decision that they don't want to have people vote. I mean, they've lost the election, the popular vote year after year in the national election. And now they've decided based on false propaganda, the big lie, that to restrict Americans' access to the ballot box. And that's what this law addresses. It improves our democracy and stops voter suppression. And But at the same time, it allows for voter identification and allows, does a lot of voter election integrity work by things like preventing, requiring people to report contacts or efforts to interfere from foreign countries. Um, There there are a lot of provisions that are designed to protect our system, um, create paper ballots, a lot of things. If you read through it and you just look at the provisions, a lot of common sense provisions that have been tested in states throughout the country, and they work to make sure that every citizen has their sacred right to vote is protected from those who don't want us to vote and from the flaws in the system that make it harder for people to vote. Well, let me let me ask you, Javier, uh, just a honest, fair question to you as, as the conservative here. Why do you hate democracy? Yeah, let me go ahead. And read that. <laughs> yeah. I <don't. laughs> uh, well, I will argue that I'm close to the edge of saying that I do not think that everyone should vote. Oh, damn. Um, I think that a democracy is only as good as its voters. And if people are not educated enough to actually make an informed vote, I would ask that you stay home and you don't cash your ballot, but you still have the right to vote. Um, the, the problem I have here is, while we like to dress it up as, oh, they're just putting in all of these provisions to make sure that people have the right to vote, what they don't tell you is it's mostly a power grab. We already have enshrined in the Constitution that people have the right to vote. If people are violating people's rights to vote, then they should be incarcerated and thrown in prison because they are violating our Constitution, which is the law of the land. So there's no need for any extra provisions or any extra law to instill something that is already enshrined in the Constitution. So I ask myself is, okay, if we already have in the Constitution people's right to vote, why is it that they need to write a new Freedom of to Vote Act to do something we already have? And it's very understandable why, because the federal government is has an interest in forcing down their view of democracy on the rest of the states. And that's what this is about. It's not about trying to ensure that everybody can vote. It's about the federal government cracking down more and more on state rights. And that's why I oppose it. Didn't we have that in our Constitution during Jim Crow era? Uh, It's actually in the 15th Amendment. Um, Section 1 says the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous conditions of servitude. It's right there in the Constitution. But Jim Crow prevented a lot of people having the ability to vote, right? That didn't seem to be prevented by the 15th Amendment. Yeah, but it was it was already against the Constitution. So all we have to do is enforce the Constitution. We it, It's one thing to have it in the Constitution. It's another thing to enforce the Constitution. And that's what we have the problem with. If people are already violating the Constitution, they are committing a criminal act against the United States of America, and they should be in prison. The moment you start to find these people and to imprison them for violating the law of the land, I guarantee you that will fix all of the problems. Rich, what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, there are provisions in there. Um, It's a crime to harass or intimidate voters and a crime to harass or intimidate or interfere with election workers. Those are two things that are in the law. And you're right. There's a history of voter suppression. Blacks had the right to vote since the amendment, but they weren't 
practically allowed to vote because of all these state laws that prevented them and behaviors that prevented them from voting. And that's why we needed the, what is it, the vote, the voting acts mm -hmm. and the the right to the voting acts. And then, and we didn't really get a full de a democracy for black people until, what, the 1950s? Let me go over some laws that they're passing right now that make it more difficult to vote. This is what voter suppression did. It's not just denying somebody the right to vote. It's making it more difficult for them, harder for them to vote, and making it, and in, in the end, preventing them from voting. Uh, excuse so me, Rich. Uh, Rich, yeah. uh, my question to you is, are you saying that we need a law to enforce a law? No, we need a law. We get, well, first of all, everybody has the right to vote. But you have to enforce that, and you need laws to enforce that. Here's some laws that they're making right now to reduce, make it harder. I mean, they're shorting the windows for mail-in ballots. They're shorting the dead deadlines to deliver mail ballots. They're making it harder to do absentee ballots. They are eliminating or limiting sending mail ballot applications. They're preventing election workers from offering to send mail in so, ballots i mean so rich you don't you don't support the freedom to vote act you support the 15th amendment i support both the freedom to vote act and the 15th amendment i don't see why these, you well, need look at, that because look at all these laws they're creating it, um, restricting assistance to voters for mail in ballots limiting the number location and availability of mail ballot drop boxes I, I don't imposing think... strictures signature requirements for mail ballots imposing harsher voter id requirements Rich. expanding voter purges increasing barriers for saying. voters with disability but the thing is is that all these things are designed to make it harder to vote in states that are already hard to vote in okay, this is Rich. i don't right. i don't think you fully understand what you're saying here is these <laughs> people that you're talking about who are doing these things are already breaking the law no they're senators they're making laws this is the problem they're making laws that are restricting people's right to vote and Rich, that's which, what we which have law, to stop which law is the law of the land the constitution or what the state laws um that they're creating which one has the higher weight which one holds the most weight in this country they're all valid and they all apply are you saying and that they're, they're all equal, equal to the constitution law. Well, the Constitution is a law, but you need laws to enforce the Constitution. You need federal agencies to write rules to interpret the Constitution. Yes, the Constitution is there, but if we don't have laws to enforce it, these are laws that are designed. And one could sue on these and say, hey, we have a 15th Amendment right. And these are. But we're making a law that is going to set standards for elections, not a law that's going to say, hey, you have the right to vote. It's a law that's setting standards to make sure that everybody's right to vote is protected. A law to protect people's right to vote from harsh and draconian laws designed to make it harder for people to vote. Okay, so that's let's, what it is. Let's, let's get into the, uh, the meat of the subject because you can talk about all of these people making all of these laws to make it harder for people to vote, but the, the, the fact of the matter is states are not permitted by the Constitution to deny anybody the right to vote. Now, if you want to say that they're making it harder for people to vote, then that's a proper argument. And we could address that argument. But we also have to uh, notice something that you don't have a constitutional right to vote for federal elections. You don't get the right to choose your president. Electors have the role of choosing the president. You vote for electors based on your state's ability on their decision on who you vote for and your electors. And they choose the electors, and then the electors vote for the president of the United States of America. And that's the system that we have in place. So while most people think they're actually going to vote for president, they're actually going to vote for electors who then get to decide who the president of the United States are, will be. And the Constitution guarantees that states should have the ability to choose their own electors based on their own criteria. So why I said this is a power grab is because now the federal government wants to override the Constitution and push down their idea on how to choose electors and how to vote for president in the federal government onto the states. And that's where it becomes a state versus the federal government issue. That's where the overreach of power is, because the federal government does not have the power to do so. So if anything, the Freedom to Vote Act is a violation of the Constitution, whereas your right to vote is enshrined in the Constitution. Yeah, you know, a lot of these arguments that come out from the right that we hear all the time, especially this one about 
um, states' rights. You know, they're based on <laughs> ignorance, basically. Are you so, saying that states don't have rights? No, what I'm saying is, is that Article 1, Section 4 of the Constitution provides that the federal government can impose rules for elections on the states. It says specifically Congress may at any time make or alter the state's red, um, regulations. So in the Constitution, because the founders of the Constitution were afraid that the states would deny their, you know, not send representatives or, or create laws that are just not run elections can, right. Can, can, you so, run that, can you run that by me again? You said that's, uh, that's the first article? article Article one, Article one, Section four, the elections clause. Okay. So, so this, so the federal government absolutely has the right to control. Congress has the right to regulate its own elections. There is no question on the Constitution about that. So that's in the Constitution. So you know that's that's the problem that we we just don't really realize that you're, you're missing, so, propaganda. You're missing, you're, you're missing something in Section yeah. four. Um, it says the times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislator, therefore. But the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations, except as to the places or choosing senators. That's about how people have the right to vote for their senators and their representatives within their own states, not when it comes to the actual federal government. So you're you're conflating what one right That's, is you know, to choose you know your senators and representatives no. versus choosing your federal representatives when well, it comes have, to presidents right you have a right to choose your your senators and the states will choose this the the federal government's not going to choose who the senator is but they will override any laws and they have the authority to override and any regulations that the states put on elections the time manner and places of elections the federal government has the right on federal elections no, not overrule. on federal elections, on state right. elections, on your no. senator. Your senator is your state representative. No, That's no, a state you're, representative. No, you're, no, you're, you're completely no. Federal. you're completely wrong about oh. that. You're completely wrong about that. State senators are state senators, and federal representatives are federal senators. Is United that... States Senate is a federal um, representative, whereas our state senators are for the state representatives. You're, 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 the representatives that are in Congress are there to represent you and your state. Am I right? In a federal election for a federal office. The is Senate a, is a federal office and the House is a federal office. It's a federal position. So it's not a state these, position. Gentlemen, gentlemen, they do yeah. represent the states, but it's not. But it's a federal election and a federal Congress. It's a it's the United. We live okay. in a country, not a loose federation of states. We live in a nation, and we're Americans. United States, right? United, United States, States, but not a set. We China. live in one country, not. We don't have fifty separate countries hey, hey guys. who just agree to be together. Guys, real, real quick, um, we might. We, well, well, this is a fascinating conversation. It's it's a little off the topic of the Freedom to Vote Act. I wanted to ask you this real quick. Maybe there's some things you guys would ag would agree with one another uh, concerning this bill. One of them would be gerrymandering. This will limit gerrymandering. And, and if you ask my opinion, I think that's what this whole thing's really about. I don't think it's necessarily about uh, fighting racism, if, you know, because that's how they motivate the left, or fighting uh, right, uh, right. stolen elections, which is how they motivate the right. Right? They, 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 we each have our triggers that they use against us. What this really is is the Democrats want to remove gerrymandering, which would likely help them. Uh, and Republicans want to keep gerrymandering, which currently helps them. Is this something that you would both agree we should get rid of? Uh, I would agree. I'm not a fan of gerrymandering personally, right. but I also the the way I jump off the ship is now the federal government is deciding how states draw their lines within their own states. We like to say the United States of America, and yes, we are a country, but this country is held together. By an agreement between all of us right to to work that. together, it, because for the for the life of me, the people who want to push these things on people completely ignore that. They completely try to throw out the fact that while we are a country, we still right. are made up okay. of individual governments. You're stuck that make on up a broader government. You're stuck on this, Javier. I'm way, I, I get the argument you're making, but what you're trying to talk about is way bigger than the bill itself, right? Or well, or whether or not. Is, the bill is an attempt to 
uh, step on that. The the bill whole purpose is to infringe on state rights. That's what the whole point of it is, because I already established that we have the right to vote in the Constitution. We already have a freedom to vote in the Constitution. So why would they need to create a new bill enforcing a law that is already a law? You have to ask, what is the motive behind this? To protect democracy, because we need regulations to make sure that democracy is carried out in a transparent, fair, and so manner would, that... So yeah. I would ask you, why instead of writing another law to enforce a law that's already being broken, not, why not, not just enforce the law and lock up or imprison <laughs> these people who are breaking the law already? Just enforce it. Well, that's... These are laws designed. See, you need regulations. You can't just have say you have a right to vote, but you need regulations in order to secure that right. Just like we can have a law that says you can't murder somebody, but we're going to need police to go out and arrest people. We're going to need a penal code to sort of state that out. We're going to have a bunch of laws to define, well, when is it murder? When is it manslaughter? You know, this is the law at the top when it's created, you know, the federal government creates the law, the courts interpret what the law is, and the administration, the executive, enforces the law. And in doing that, they create all sorts of other laws to regulate. So we need to have laws that regulate the time, manner, and place of elections, and to make sure that they're fair and transparent and clean and honest so that we get representatives from the state that actually represent the people of that state and so that we have an actual democracy in the United States. There's a compelling interest in the federal government to make sure our elections are clean and fair. And that's what this law does. It makes it easy to vote and harder to cheat. And that's what we're trying to do here. You know, it's not that people, when people go and intimidate uh, election worker or threaten them. Well, there are laws, sure, that you can use, but this one has other laws mm -hmm. that make it easier. Also, how, how about making election day a holiday? Is that something that you might support oh, that that's in, that? in this view? I didn't know that's that was in, in this... that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, in the, it's, it's, a, it's in the bill. Fantastic. What I'm saying right. is, Javier, there, you're there, for are, that, right? there are multiple things in this bill that are good ideas. What I'm saying is, I, I'm not in a position to trade one aspect of our democracy while infringing on another part of our democracy. And that's where I jump out the ship. It's all good. You can have good intentions all day, but also you have to realize that everything is not as black and white. Just because you have good intentions don't give you the right to force your view of your good intentions on everybody else. Now, if states want to decide for themselves how they hold elections, if they want to give, like Georgia, for example, they made a new bill about voting and they actually expanded the amount of time that you can early vote. But nobody wanted to talk about that in the media. Everybody wanted to focus on the parts that they didn't like. But with that being said, in certain elections, yes, you have the right to vote. And I am 100 percent with the federal government deciding that when it's time to vote, you can't make it impossible for people to vote because you're actually infringing on their right to do so. I'm 100 percent with you. But when the federal government starts to telling you how you must hold your elections, when you must hold your elections, in what manner you must hold your elections, that's when they start to infringe on state rights. And is we the problem here is there are people in California who want to tell people in Texas how to run their run their state and people in Texas want to tell people in California how to run their state okay it might be a good idea cuz somebody feels like they know better than the other people but what you have is you're going to have contention you're going to have the people in Texas hating the people in California and we can't run a country that way that way we cannot continue this way that's why everybody is angry and upset with each other because everybody is trying to tell everybody else how they should live and how they should conduct this and do that and for the life of me, the federal government is not equipped to put broad blankets over the rest of the country and think it's going to work for every single country because every I mean, every single state, because every state is different. Every state has different requirements, different needs, different wants in a different way. They want to do things. Can, can I ask you a, a hypothetical, Javier? Yes. So you, you would agree that everyone should have the right to vote. But that one, we settled that ad nauseum, yes. right? What if in, one fiftieth? So, so you don't you don't think that everyone should have the right to vote, federally speaking, but only only in state elections? Well, I'm just going based off the Constitution. The states have the right to choose the manner in which they get electors. I mean, whether I like it or disagree with it, it is the law of the land, and I tend to err on the side of the law of the land. 
the people that we put in Congress, those are decided on by the individuals of their state, correct? Yes. And those people are going to make decisions federally, correct? Yes, yes. What if the people, uh, let's say everyone from Georgia, only let left-handed people vote there? But and the left-handed people... That would, be a, that would pe- be a violation of the Constitution. Yeah, but let's say they don't really violate it that way. They, they just, uh, they kind of put some kind of Jim Crow stuff in place that limits the number of right-handed people. Um, and it's not really like they're they're keeping them from doing it. They just, you know, right-handed people, let's say they are more likely to mail in their ballots. So they say, uh, we're not going to take in mail-in ballots, uh, knowing that they are limiting the votes a little bit to help the left-handed mm-hmm. people out. If mm-hmm. that was happening, they're not breaking any laws. In fact, they're passing state laws protecting themselves from being held accountable for almost violating the federal law, right? So in that sense, wouldn't that prevent by 1 50th the actual ability of the senators and congressmen to come to a fair democracy? Because one of the states is not actually being as democratic as the others. So in that sense, wouldn't wouldn't that mean that the federal government uh, should require states to have certain voting access to their citizenry because by doing so it makes the entire country a little more democratic well uh yes and no um i am look i I understand i I definitely get it that state rights cannot be the all be all i'm not arguing for state rights to be able to do any and everything that they want because that's why we have a federal constitution to prevent states from violating certain things even though they are individual states so i I, I sympathize with your point. I, I really, really, really do. Whereas one of the problems that we have is states are competing against other states. That's that's just the fact of the matter. States want to be the ones who attract the most businesses, just like with the abortion bill that happened in Georgia. You saw how Hollywood was up in arms about it, and it was like, we're not going to do any movies in Georgia anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, states have an interest in their survival, and the people who run these states want to continue to keep that seat of power. And the problem is when you start to make these laws and these rules that restrict um, people from the ability to vote freely, what you create is a vacuum. And whereas you have people leaving your state, going to other states that treat them better and they actually prosper. Those other states gain much more in return for you being a silly asshole. And we're not in a business of trying to keep states afloat who make stupid policies and stupid laws. We have to be able to correct ourselves. But if the federal government does it, what you end up creating is a resentment in these states towards the federal government. You have people talking about receding and receding from the country. Like, what what the hell is this? Um, And the reason that you have people up in arms about this is because there's a faraway government in D.C. deciding how your state should be ran. Why the hell do we need a state government if the federal government can just mandate every single thing they want because they feel like it's a good idea? We have to be careful with that. So I'm not against what you're saying. I'm just more on the precautionary side of of the fence. Be real careful what uh, powers you give the federal government, because while it may seem like you have the right ideas and the good tactics, these things tend to self-correct themselves without creating enemies and resentment within people in other states, which is why you see people showing up fighting and shooting each other and yelling and screaming online because everybody feels like the other person is imposing on their way of life. We have to, at some point, figure out what's the fine line between enforcing the rights of the Constitution and every individual versus allowing states to make their own decisions. Yeah, there's a, you know my opinion that people are fighting because of propaganda, false propaganda, that's spreading false information to both the right and the left. And that's why people are fighting, not because... The, of And this false propaganda includes this idea that somehow, like we can't have states where some states send democratically elected candidates and another state is a dictatorship. We, we just can't have that. We, we have to have a system in which every state is a democracy and every citizen's right to vote is protected. And while there are laws that have expanded the right to vote. And Javier is right about that. There are laws and some of the states, there's there's sort of a mix. The problem is, is that the laws that have the states that have restrictive laws already have very restrictive voting rights laws. So those states, it's very hard to vote, particularly if you're a minority. I mean, limiting the time that a person has to wait in line to 
30 minutes. That's a good law. Now we have people waiting in line for hours, banning people from giving snacks and water to people <laughs> waiting in two hour lines, lines for hours, you know, and stopping them from doing that. You know, this is just abuse. We cannot have a system where one state has elections that are run that suppress the vote of thousands or hundreds of thousands of their citizens and other states that are fully represented. We need every state to be a full democracy, and we need a full democracy in this country. Right now, we have a flawed democracy. And the democracy will continuously be flawed. You're no, trying to you're trying to make something perfect, which is impossible to do. And I, I get that you said you can make things better. And I'm not saying that you can't. What I'm saying is, where do you draw the line? Let me ask you that question. What is too far for you when it comes to federal power over the states? When do you draw the line, Mr. Presido? And and before wow. before you answer, Rich, just for clarity, Javier, when he says flawed democracy, he's not using that colloquially. He's referring to the polity index. No. And like we actually we don't rank that well there. Just to, I mean let you know I'm, I'm sure you've seen it before though right like it's, yeah yeah we're 25th, 25th. oh my god yeah the, 25th. The, issue, the issue is we're not we're not allowing states to self-correct like people in california right now there's a large percentage of people in california who are unhappy with their leadership and, and a lot of these people are leaving the state and going elsewhere and what that does is it sends the signal to the state that something is wrong here and it needs to be fixed either we're going to elect somebody to fix it or this state will fail and, and with all of that, people are taking their skills, their resources, their capital to other states where they f- appreciate the system that is in place. And I'm not saying that everybody can move and everybody can go somewhere else. I'm not saying that at all. But the long as the federal government has an interest in keeping states prospering, even though they're making bad policies and bad laws, you're never really sending this right signals to those states to get their shit together. You're not doing it. I, I cut. So I they cut continuously. A, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was going to say I, I cut you off in the middle of your question, though, which was which is how far is too far? Was that close yes, to what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How how far? Where do you draw the line, Rich? Because uh, a lot of people on the left, and I, I don't want to make this a left right issue. I I, I want to focus on the Constitution, the Freedom to Vote Act, and the laws, and whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. It, it's not left or right, but why? Where do you draw the line? When do you say that the federal government is overreaching their power? Do you have that place where you feel like, OK, that's too far? Well, there's um, here in this law, you know, you, the federal government can't tell the states who is going to be their senator or who is going to be their representative. You know, they so that would be too far. Generally, you know, it's a hard question because it's very technical. Generally, things like family law are outside of the federal government's purview. Um, There are certain state laws that are not preempted by the um, federal government. But that's a really technical question. Ultimately, we have the Commerce Clause and we have the standards for a constitution. So the Commerce Clause allows the federal government to enact laws that deal with interstate commerce. And that's mm-hmm. a very broad definition because the economy is so mm-hmm. interconnected. So, you know, there's a, we are a federal government, but there are certain lines and family law might be one of them and choosing a senator who, you, who is going to be the senator um, here. But the time, manner, and place can be regulated to ensure that we have actual representative democracies in each state. And we are a flawed democracy in the world. And there are full democracies. Canada is a full democracy. Social democracies. Chile is a full democracy. Um, Costa Rica, the only country in Central America we didn't invade, is a full democracy. Australia, wow. a full democracy. Japan. Well, you know that you know that America was never designed to be a hundred percent full democracy. That that's not what the intentions of the founders were. It was never designed to be a complete democracy. We're a democratic republic, and uh, the reason that I asked you that question, um, Rich, is because I believe in limited principles, um, knowing where the fine line is. And one could use your same argument that you're using for the Freedom to Vote Act, and they can just apply that to any other area of the federal law. I mean, I could argue that, well, you said that them choosing who your senator and representative is too far. 
Well, why is it too far? What if one state decides that they want to keep voting against some jerk or some a-hole and they continuously keep doing it and it's making everybody else suffer due to it? That, Should- that, that's actually happening. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm sure yeah. that happens and, a number of places. Even in California, we have an a-hole senator up there. Yeah, so. yeah. And if you if you continuously do that, you one could argue why doesn't the federal government have an interest in stopping that? Why doesn't the federal government have an interest in ensuring that a more suited representative wins the election in that state? I mean, why not? Well, because it's represented by the people, right? The people have a pair, supposedly. Now, if that person was chosen through a dictatorial process, then even then, you know, but we obviously need a democracy. They don't have a right to have a dictator. But the same people, the the people chose that. And that's the reason. And because (laughs) the people have chosen that and they had a fair election, then the people, the states have a right to choose their own representative because we live in a federal system and, you know, the states send their representatives over to the federal government And so that's why they have a right to choose their own senator, but they don't have a right to choose it in a way that's undemocratic or that restricts their population's access to the ballot box so that they can then manipulate who's going to take power or to gerrymander their way into power. They shouldn't have the right to do that either. So you're saying that a state shouldn't have the right to draw the lines in their state how they so choose? Oh, absolutely not. So I there mean, you it, go again, it, right. controlling the states and how they run their state. Well, when they run in a way that doesn't represent democracy, then the federal government has a compelling interest to make sure that every to, state is run in a democratic fashion. This is the and, thing. And they control their own lines. elections. Well, the line here is not <laughs> there because section, Article 1, Section 4 explicitly states, and it was by the founders, that Congress can overwrite any regulation that the state makes on the time, manner, and place of holding elections at that because yeah, but the founders wanted Congress to have telling, control over that. But it doesn't say anything about the federal government telling the states how they can draw lines in their own state. It says time, nothing place, about manner, that. Yeah, it, well, the leg- it's, you know, you have to interpret these things over over time, it doesn't even address that. Well, you're right? It doesn't even say it. anything. I'm not reading anything into it. You know, you can take a look at this, but what you have to do now is go to the court law, read case law, uh, read interpretations of judges. If you want to ask specific questions about the law on specific issues, that's what you have to do. You have to research it and determine um, what the law is according to the courts. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Rich, um, and you can ask me a question anytime you please. Um, are Are you on the opinion that the federal government is right on what they decide to push down on the states? Well, that's a too broad of a question. I can't, they, they don't have a right. You know, they, you, that's rhetoric, you know, push down on the states. The federal government has the authority under the Commerce Clause to regulate the economy and to make sure, and it has broad authority. It's not, a. this is not a separate individual states who are just coming together um, in a loose coalition. This is an actual nation, and the federal government has a lot of power to make laws and to fund things and to you know to make laws that the states have to follow. Basically, basic standards. In other words, what, what I'm asking we're you, Rich, basic protections. Let me just finish. Basic protections basic. for Senate's for voting rights. So they can make those basic standards and the states often can go further than that they can protect voting rights and democracy even further but there's a minimum level that they can't go under they can't start suppressing voters that's what the standards are so we're just setting standards and states have a right to do more but not less exactly and the federal government gets to decide what that standard is Based right, on what you because, just said. Okay. because they have a compelling interest to do so, okay, and they have the so, right under Article 1, Section 4, and under the Commerce Clause okay. to do so. Let me ask you a question, Rich. Do you, don't, do you not think that the federal government, whoever is in charge of the federal government right now, who has the power in Congress and all of these things, do you not think that they're going to make those rules and those standards based on what best suits them? 
They're making those rules to save democracy, not to what suits them. <laughs> who, who the party that's making this is the Republican Party, who wants to thing. oppose democracy. Absolutely. I, and if Rick, you want to say that, how about the state legislatures? Do you think that they're not making laws that benefit them? And how about the Republicans in power in state? Not. Are they not making laws? That benefit they them, they right? Are. They, they are, are making laws I'm that benefit them. But this is a federal law under consideration that's going under compromise. We're looking at the law. And if you want to say that they're making this law only to benefit them, you better point it out in the law what provisions of that law are better for them, except in the extent that they are creating a clear and stable democracy yeah, unless they're improving our dem democratic rights. That's it. That's what yeah, they're doing. So they're not thing. making this law for their own interest. No, absolutely okay. not. They're making it to protect democracy. That's what this law is if about. You're not, if, not you're not law, if you're not, not in politics, if you're not in politics, not every law made by the federal government is some corrupt. We're just doing it for ourselves. I mean, that's a Republican idea. We just do it for ourselves. That's a conservative uh, uh, idea. No, but that's, that's, not conservative not idea. The, that's not what's happening. That's in the not federal. a conservative idea. Republicans it, and conservatism doesn't have to be one and the same. You're just you're, you're, you're conflating the two. Not all conservatives agree on all of these issues. You're talking about the Republican Party, but we already know that the Democrats have an interest in making laws as well that suits them. Just like trying to limit, try, trying to lower the voting age down to 16. I support that. That's not in oh the goodness. that's not in the act. Absolutely. No, what, I think what we need is, young people getting involved early and we need classes to teach young people how to tell the difference, how to analyze laws, how to look at candidates, how to determine if that candidate is a sociopath or a narcissist or whether he's a healthy individual. And and we need to get young people involved. No, I think that don't. would be a great way to do that because you look at the old people and they're no better. We're I mean, already, just as we're sick already and hyper, up as any young people. We're already hyper politicized. Now you're trying to force politics down on young people as well. It's Poli like this is not a recipe about for a healthy country. But that's about the common good. We should all be involved. You, are you telling me that we people shouldn't vote or that people no, shouldn't well, be involved in, in their cases, government? Yes. This in is this cases, is yes. an opportunity to work for the common good. That's what politics is. Let me Working ask you, for the common good. Rich, Rich, do you think that the country would be better if less Republicans voted? At, well, I certainly do. <laughs> he got you there, Rich. You see what I'm he got you pretty good. Right, 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 right. Well, I mean, but that's because I think they're idiots. Right. So, so Fair. If, if less idiots vote, that would be a good thing. Okay, I'm not that so big. Your, your argument isn't really based on the more people that vote, the better. No, it's not. It, it's based on people okay. having the right to vote. Okay, so this whole 16-year-old being able to vote crap, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily make the system better. Um, but also... Well, it gives more people the right to vote who should have the right to vote. If, it's their country, their future. They should have the right to vote. Yeah, I mean, they should have the right. I'm not saying that they shouldn't have the right. What I'm saying is it's not always a good thing that everybody goes out and vote. It's not. Well, yeah, well, that, that I would agree with you on. And, that there are certain people who are antisocial, who are narcissistic, who cannot who are in it only for themselves and don't care about the common good and they should not. And I, I don't want them to vote, but it's like, you know, you can't, you have to, it's like, don't pull up the weeds or, or you'll kill the wheat. And the story of Jesus and, and it said about the farmer who an enemy came in and sowed weeds with the wheat. He said, let them grow together. So we have to let everybody vote, but do I think that some people are irresponsible, immoral, and careless? With let me their ask vote? you. Let After. me ask you. Let me ask you this, Rich. Do you think that the Democrats will be pushing something like this if they knew that by doing what they're doing would lead them to winning less elections? You know, the Democrats have done some stupid things before, and they often want to play by the rules. and And this is what this filibuster thing is about, right? Oh, we don't want to give up the filibuster. Some you know, some, maybe not all Democrats, only really two, right? But if they would do something, they could do something stupid, but, um, and they would want to play by the rules, but it's the Republicans who never, will never do anything to benefit the country if it benefits the Democrats. Uh, so uh, that, well, that happens as well. So I'm not, I don't, I don't think, I think that there are good people in both parties, but there are good people who want to do the right thing. And right now they're afraid that, 
but democracy is under attack, not just by Republicans and the right, but internationally by authoritarian governments like Putin and China and all these other people putting propaganda into this country, anti-American propaganda, which you hear on the left and on and fascist propaganda on the right. They're the ones who if you, if you want to have a conversation about right and wrong, I'm 100 percent there with you. There are things that Republicans do that I know is wrong that they constitutionally have the right to do. I, I, I try to separate the two. I, I'm not trying to see what is right. And we should always push what is right, because even though you might want to push what's right, sometimes it goes against the law of the land. It goes against the Constitution. And you have to abide by certain laws and restrictions. And my argument is not whether if you're saying that these things will help people and, and make it right. OK, you can make that argument. But then I will have to ask you, OK, is it constitutional? And is this something that we want to do? And what are the consequences of doing so in the future? I do not think that the Democrats have real interest in making democracy better. I think the Democrats have a vested interest in securing an environment in which they win all the elections or more elections. And if it was the other way around, they would be probably not pushing this bill. And I know it. And the, Dem and the Republicans are the same exact way. Everything that they do is a calculated move to best ensure that they get more elections won. That, that's just politics. If you go into politics and you're not have an interest in your side winning, why are you into politics? Because you believe at the end of the day that your politics is what's best for the country. I'm not that cynical. I'm not that cynical. I think that people are actually going into Congress. There are people there who are in it for their own self-interest. And obviously the whole Republican Party will get behind and be unified regardless of whether the law is good or bad. If it hurts the democrats but i'm right, not that so, cynical well, let's i think look, that let's people reality, are going but no 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 let me let me finish i think people are going into the senate because they want to do something good they want to have a legacy they want to have done something important in their life and there are plenty of good people in congress who are trying to do the right thing adam shift is one of them very healthy individual all these people, Bernie Sanders, even though he's got he's an old guy with an old ideology, he's still trying to do something good, still trying to make the country he's still a better playing place. Politics. He's right? still no, playing no. politics. Well, they all play, play politics. There's no doubt about it. But the point is that I'm not that cynical. I think people are actually trying to do something good for this country. And I think there are people who are actually don't care and are doing something bad. But the, and they're both in the same places, just like that farmer's field. You got the weeds and the wheat, and they're all together. And God said, let them grow together, because if you pull out the weeds, you're going to pull out the wheat with them. So uh, usually, that's sort of where we're at. Usually the reason we have laws and things of that sort is to prevent people with good intentions from doing horrible things based on those good intentions. Everything, just because I think you have... That, I, I think that's a, a sort of an extreme view. I mean, I, mean, I think we have laws to prevent people with bad intentions from doing evil things. That's what people, we have laws for. And there are people, usually the most dangerous people are the ones who are convinced that they have the right position and that through all costs, they're willing to push it because they that, really believe that true. they have the answers. Now, I'm, I'm, if you want to change the Constitution, if you want to amend or add... Please change the Constitution. I'm not We're, saying that you did. I'm not saying that you did. But if you want to change the Constitution so that it better fits for the system that you want to live in, go for it. That's why I say it's a democracy. Everybody has the right to agree, disagree, Go for it. But what I'm saying is, as, as it currently stands, we have to draw a limit between what the federal government can do and what the states still have rights to do. And in a climate where we already have hyperpartisanship and um, people are not particularly, especially on the right, are not particularly well with the federal government telling them what they can and can't do. Even if you are right, what you're doing is creating an environment where people feel isolated and feel as if the federal government is cracking down on them and they're going to push back. So. While you might have the good intentions, while you might feel like you're justified to do so, you're creating an environment which is very toxic and it will have negative consequences if you continuously expand the federal government's power over the states. I really do believe that. And I would ask any and everybody to take a second look at what's going on in this country and reconsider. Right. It's not we're not expanding the power. The Congress already has the power. So there's no expansion. We just going talked on about here. right. We, and but secondly, um, you know, people are screwed up and it's not because of what Congress is doing. It's because of the false propaganda that they're being fed, particularly when you start talking about here we have, and this is not you, Javier, this is coming from the top. They want to make this argument about somehow that when Congress goes in and sets standards 
for the right to vote to ensure that people have access to the ballot box, that somehow they're invading state rights. When the Article 1, mm -hmm. Section 4 says absolutely otherwise, when Congress has the authority to regulate its own elections, it's very clear what you're doing is you're sending false information to people to make them angry. And that's what the problem is. It's not with Congress doing things. It's not with anybody stepping on anybody's rights. It's about false information, false propaganda being disseminated to the masses and dividing this country. And it's every, happening on every, both the right and the left, not just the you're, you're right about that. It's on both the right and the far but left. My question is, to reach shouldn't, the middle we, of the country. shouldn't we fix that before we start allowing the federal government to go in even more into the states and demand that they have to operate a certain way when it comes to voting? They already have that authority. There is nothing to stop them from doing that, and they should. We already do that. discussed right. in the Constitution th that it says that the, the the federal government cannot tell states how to choose their electors. They but can, they can tell them how to run elections. They can't tell them who they're going to get, but they can r tell them how they need to run them. That's okay. what that says. So you're okay with the voter validation clause of the vo um, Freedom to Vote Act, where it says that the states have to accept. Um, electronic copies of voter IDs or alternative options for voter validation? I think that it does not impose upon the states a vote, any type of voter ID requirement. I think that would be inappropriate and in, unhelpful. But states that do have voter ID need to make sure that they're not using those ID requirements to restrict people from voting. For example, allowing a National Rifle Association identification to be used, but not a student ID. You know, we need they're setting standards to make sure that states don't use overly restrictive ID requirements designed to make it's, it more difficult not, to prevent certain groups of people from voting. There are Democrats who say that you shouldn't even be required to show any identification and able to vote. You know, I think that's a falsehood. I think there may be some. I think there may be some on the extreme right. But come on. Everybody has to register their names right there. People have to sign. There's nobody it, who is against identifying voters. What? That's not an issue. <laughs> Nobody is against identifying voters. I mean, yeah. their name's right there. They have to sign. They, yeah, but not, you have they to, have to sign. You, you say you but are. They, they already registered, right? They've already registered. And also, you know, this law does not make states have voter ID, but it allows them to. And no, all it no, says no, is no, you have no. to use certain IDs. It allows no. states to have voter identification. Yes, it does. It allows states to have voter identification. It just For requires that you use a lot of different I I types of identification, that you allow a list of identification that is standard so that people won't be denied the right to vote because that's a fundamental sacred right that people cannot lose and you don't lose your right to vote just because you may not have a certain type of identification so as long as you provide adequate identification that's so all it's so, that it's okay so it's okay for me to go into a liquor store and provide them with any type of identification i want and get alcohol that's not the law. That's not no, the law no, at no, all. No, but, no, it's not the law. But what I'm saying is when I go to buy alcohol and when I go buy cigarettes or whatever the case may be, I have to show my ID. I have to show you my ID. You don't have a right card. to alcohol. Now, you don't have a right. Even more of a reason because voting determines the future of our country. It's more vital than me going to buy alcohol that I get and that's it right. why we need to have everybody voting. That's why everybody, and we can't restrict it. It's so vital that we need to protect and sacred right, granted to humanity by God when he said, take <laughs> dominion. That's what voting is, a sacred right of every individual cannot be taken away. I mean, there, except for circumstances such as committing a felony, and even then, you know, so you're it's saying questionable. That, you're saying that in order for me to buy liquor, I have to show an ID. But if I want to vote for the future of my country, which is a very more consequential act, that I shouldn't have to show my ID. That well, that depends on the state. Like I said, the states are have the freedom to impose uh, voter ID requirements on. So that depends on the state. In California, 
Uh, we have certain requirements. We require people to register. They don't have to show their ID at the poll, but they do have to sign. They do have to identify their name. You're on that voter roll. So we do know who's voting. And so, yeah, so people can. Uh, you know, look, I, uh, let's, let's just I, I, I feel as if on that subject, I mean, we're probably not going to get any further than that because, I mean, it's actually a okay. great time to wrap up, I think. But it, the oh, OK. OK. I wanted to, to ask one more question about this whole long lines not being over 30 minutes. And oh, yeah. Um, I actually wanted to, wanted to hear more about that, too, and, and how they're giving them like they won't let them have water or snacks or something like what. What's the no, real story a, there? Uh, the the problem they, that they was running into is saying that people have an interest in like going to voter booths or voting stations and offering people water and, um, you know, different foods and stuff while they're waiting in line. And there are people who will try to strike conversations with people and try to see how they're going to vote or try to persuade them to vote one way or the other. And they use it as a tactic to, you know, try to have a conversation about people voting. And I mean, it could be done on the right. It could be done on the left. And I'm not saying it happens on a, a on a scale that matters. I mean, I think every vote matters, I guess. But what they're saying is in the in this new uh, vote vote act is that the long can the line can be no longer than a 30 minute wait and that they um they can't prohibit donations of food or water to voters waiting in line. And it's like, okay, so if I have to stand in line for 45 minutes and I don't have any water or food, that's somehow restricting my ability to be able to vote, which is nonsense. No, not at all. Why would you want to stand 45 minutes in line? Why would you want to spend 30 minutes in line? Because to vote? I'm when voting I go to vote, for the future of the country. But when I go to vote, I just walk in there. There's hardly any line for me. Why is that? I'm a white guy. I, I don't know why. Why do it's they the have to with stand me. in line? It's the you same know? way with and, me. And, right. Why they should not. Nobody should have to stand in line for a long time. Look. Secondly, those people who are going, they took their nonpartisan position very seriously when they were doing the handing out the snacks and doing the election. Are you talking about your personal experience? No, I'm telling you that the, I was in those groups. I was working with them, and we were working to make sure everybody had the right to vote. Everybody could exercise their right to vote, trying to make people comfortable, trying to make standing in these long, unbearable lines because some state, the state legislatures decided that they didn't need enough polling places in places that were democratic or would or were minority communities and that's why you have to wait two hours three hours in line and these people took their nonpartisan um, positions very seriously they weren't out campaigning at those elections so that's more false information because being your spent. antidotal evidence of your experience with antidotal the group that you were in i and know where that you they live. were no i i know where th that they have their nonpartisan position and that they're 501c3s and that they're not going to interject and do any campaigning at all. So I know that that's a false threat that they're trying to use to criminalize the provision of water and food to people waiting in so you're, long, so unbearable you're trying, lines. You're trying to say, Rich, that I can't go join one of these groups and hand out water and food. And then while I'm in line passing out, I can't say, hey, man, you should really vote for Trump. You, or, you, you can't. Should really you can't. I can't. I'm, I'm can't. restricted from doing so. You like, are it's impossible for me to from, get away with it. It's not impossible for you to get away with it, but that's you're asking somebody saying, oh, they're going there and violating the law. That is already a law. It's say, already yeah. a law not to campaign. They already know that. It's against you the law to campaign. Campaigning and, campaigning and saying something to somebody in line is a totally different thing. No, campaigning is wearing T-shirts putting up posters or you know trying to show off who you what candidate you voted for and why other people right. should vote for well it. that's pretty speculative if you're going to say all oh, these people they're all going to be corrupt all they're all going to violate the law they're all going to do that no that. they took their nonpartisan position that. very seriously right. and they stood by it and i guarantee in you situation. that they were nonpartisan in doing that okay well, you, you witnessed this uh, okay, I, I I still feel like he should address the whole fact that is 35, 45 minutes standing in line is too long. I, I for the life of me, long. I don't understand. And people don't have access to bring their own water or their own food if they're going to stand in line. It's like at some point, and then you got to also address the fact that resources. Um, what about those states that don't have enough resources, enough people signing up, or enough people to actually conduct these um locations, all these multiple locations to make sure that nobody's standing well, they, in line? They have provisions minutes. for that. I don't see the provisions. I've read this well, thing. There's, I'm a not provision, provision. there's provisions in which they say if you don't have um, so many people, it's only for um, 
districts with so many people, you can change the rules. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but they do take consideration of that in the law. Okay, I would like you to send it to me because I read through this whole thing and I have I must have overlooked it. And it's possible that I overlooked it, but I didn't see it. But okay. I guess we can end there, I guess. Sure. I, I appreciate you guys. I've enjoyed this conversation. And that was that was actually one of the things that I didn't know uh, about was what the story is on the, the drinks and, and snacks or what have you. I had heard just the random stuff like Tucker Carlson kind of stuff, you know, but, but I hadn't I hadn't heard, heard it broken down that way. Um, and also, what was that other one? That you said they, um, oh, it making a holiday. I didn't know that either. So I, I learned a lot yeah. today. Hopefully the listeners learned a lot as well. Uh, you can check out Bible Study for Progressives on any of your podcast outlets, as well as Democracy Under Fire. Um, that's also a YouTube channel, so it might be fun to watch. Uh, thank you so much, Rich Presida. Also, thank you. the Javier Javier Show. I watch it. Yeah, I enjoy yeah. it. Um, I've seen, I haven't seen all of your two sides, one coin. I had Ben Fama Jr., uh, your co-host on that show. He was on here recently and let me know that you guys are doing this, uh, once every week now. So yeah. I'm, I'm getting behind, but I have enjoyed the episodes that I listened to. So thanks Javier. And, and then thank, thank you both. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Me thanks Javier. Thank you. Thank you to Rich and Javier. Thank you to Dave Blair at DaveBlairMusic.com. Thank you to Feedspot.com for promoting the right to reason to the top 10 atheist podcasts. Thank you to our patrons, Phil Calderon, Jason Parker, Freethinker215, Alan Marks, Philip Spawn, Bernard Lamborell, Animal Man, Larry Wilson, Brittany Catherman, Michael Moore, Catherine Class, Rob Shrek, and our top supporter, Rob Montgomery. You can support this broadcast at Patreon.com forward slash right. And learn more at therighttoreason.com. Next week, I will be discussing epistemology and the origins of morality with Christian apologist Robert White. Between now and then, remember that you have the right to reason. One of these are brown, yeah. when the skies This is the Right to Reason podcast. The Right to Reason, the world's most okayish podcast nobody listens to. I have the right to vote, and I have the right to reason. This was the Right to Reason. This is the Right to Reason. It's the Right to Reason podcast. podcast.